through a lighthouse project. It should help more and more of us, of all of us, to start our day, to start our life, as we begin, each and every one of us, every day as much as we can, to begin with positivity, to begin with love, to begin our first day of the rest of our life, the first moment of the rest of our life, to not speak any Lashon Hara, to not say anything negative about any Jew, as the Chavetz Chaim promises us, that's why we do this every day, that if one learns my Sefer on a daily basis, and his Yetzahara for Lashon Hara will become smaller until it will eventually leave him completely. So every day we will learn Hilchas Lashon Hara, so that we will be Zoha, as the Chavetz Chaim tells us, that the main cause of the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. The main cause of the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash is Lashon Hara. And in order for this Gullus to end, we have to go ahead and stop talking Lashon Hara. Uh, so you could say somebody else has to stop talking Lashon Hara. No. Be the change that you want to see in the world. Start with yourself. Start with yourself, and that's what we're trying to do over here. For example, Gullus Mitzrayim, when Dustin and Avira informed Paro, right, we're on page 34 in Purity of Speech, that when Dustin and Avira informed Paro that Moshe killed the Mitzri, Moshe said, now I understand why the Jews have to go through this terrible Gullus. Why? Because there's Lashon Hara going on. By the Miraglim. We all know that the Avera of the Miraglim was that they spoke Lashon Hara about Eretz Yisrael. Same thing. What did that cause? It caused them to die, and they were not allowed to enter Eretz Yisrael. The Chavetz Chaim continues that we can only expect brachas from Hashem. It's difficult to expect all the blessings from God if we talk Lashon Hara. It says, Arur Make It's a curse for someone who hits his friend secretly. How do you hit your friend secretly? The only way you can hit your friend secretly is when you speak Lashon Hara, because your friend doesn't even know that you spoke about him. How does he know? The guy's in a different country, and you're talking bad about him right now. So you're hitting your friend secretly. And says the Chavetz Chaim on a positive note, there is no other mitzvah for which one is Zoha, that every time you control yourself from not speaking Lashon Hara, you merit a heavenly light, which is so holy that even an angel cannot even fathom. So every time somebody is going to speak Lashon Hara and he does not speak Lashon Hara, what it does is a person is able to perceive something, his neshama will go ahead and perceive something that even an angel cannot perceive. Says the Chavetz Chaim, Hilchus Lashon Hara, Dalit Aleph, right? We said yesterday just to Chazer over, right? You can't say, oh, if a guy gained weight, right? Or someone is heavy, you can't say, oh, that guy is heavy, even if everybody knows it. Even if there's a guy who's very fat and everyone sees that he's fat, you can't say he is heavy. Or if you know that somebody, everyone knows somebody is, is uh, you know, wearing something very dirty and they could see it. So even though everyone can see it, you can't just go ahead and say, oh, yeah, that guy is wearing a dirty hat. That guy is wearing a dirty jacket. Why? Because it's something that you would be embarrassed if someone said that about you. Causing humiliation, says the Chavetz Chaim, talking negatively about someone's family. Says the Chavetz Chaim, you're not allowed to talk negatively about someone's family. For example, I heard that Moshe's parents are not honest. You're not allowed to say that. Or you say that Leah's family is quarreling, they're fighting over their father's inheritance. That is pure Lush and Hara. Question, comments? Question, comments from anyone? Yeah. Why are you going to go over to someone and say, oh, you just, I see you just lost weight, and people will indicate, you realize that he was fat before. What, you're saying it just you and him? In front of a group, you have to be very careful what you say. In front of a group, to somebody else, very careful. You might embarrass the guy. 
No, but I feel like that's more of a compliment. Oh, if you say it's a compliment, you look great. What do you have to say? Why do you say you look great? Why can't you just say you look great? What do you have to start saying? Uh, you did, you did. You look great. You look awesome. You have to be you careful. You look great. You look great. Right. Zev, you look great. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That what? Yes, for sure about Eretz Yisrael, a person has to be very careful. Thank you, Shlomo. Yeah, good. A person, Yitzhi's asking, is it that you're not allowed to talk Lashon Hara? So the different things, we're not going into this now. I don't know all the halachas well enough to give a whole uh, public sheer about it, but there are certain aspects of people saying Lashon Hara about objects, about things, and about Eretz Yisrael specifically. For a person has to be very careful when he talks negative about Eretz Yisrael. Very careful when you say, oh, Eretz Yisrael this, Eretz Yisrael, a person has to be very, very careful. That's for sure. Yeah, we're yes. The land, huh? Defending the land, like what is it up? Yeah, yeah, Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael is alive and well. Eretz Yisrael is not just land. Besides, that's Stam. But, but I'm saying Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael yeah, is... Let's say someone says how, like, in Eretz Yisrael about something negative. About so you have to, so Stam is like, you have to be careful because you say, oh, Israelis. That's yeah, Lashonar, pure Lashonar. Lashonar? No, but like, who, who, you're not specific. Yeah, specific so it's even worse. Person. It's even worse. It's a group. A group is even worse. You say, oh, those Hasidim are X, Y, and Z. Israelis, X, Y, and Z, pure, pure Lashonara. Is it something that people do? Shkayach, of course. That's what we think. Yeah, now let us say it. You're grouping. That means when you say, right? If you tell your kid, imagine you tell your kid, Israelis are rude. So what will your kid? What is lashon hara about every Israeli? That every Israeli is rude. He gives it out. There he is. What if he says He's, something about Americans? Same thing. Okay, Americans. That's already a guy. I was thinking Americans already a guy. Israelis. You don't mean Israeli Arabs. You don't mean somebody with a tudat zehut. You mean an Israeli? You mean a Jew? A person has to be very, very careful. Yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable. That's why we learn Hilchus Lashon Hara. We don't think like that, because that's how people talk. Israelis are this. Americans are this. This one's like this. This group is like this. Well, if you're talking about, I don't know, customer service, and you say something about a nation as a whole, you're not, you're not, but you're not, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not really giving, like, what? Anyone was pogaba there? Like, if you say, uh, you're saying a very general... Everybody is pogaba, you're right. Everyone is, you're, pogaba. you're being pogaba in everyone, yeah. Yeah. Think so, yeah. Yeah, so they did. Okay. We'll look, I'll look, I'll look it up for you, Rebzev. Yeah, I think it's even worse in a certain way, because you can't even ask Mechila from anybody. You're saying the whole group. <coughs> it's very dangerous. Okay, but the bottom line is, the bottom line is, it's, it's like we always say in Hilchas Lashon Hara that the greatest person who you're benefiting when a person works on not speaking Lashon Hara, yes, Morty. So when you say land, when you talk about Lashon Hara about the land, yeah. if it's 100% agreed, how, in case of that, how would you ask for uh, the... the Michael, right, yeah, yeah, I hear, I hear. I guess you have to love the land even more, right? 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 The best way is not just to, right, when you say something negative about someone, it's not just apologizing, it's, it's, loving, it's loving the land even more. It's going on loving the land even more, loving another Jew. Adraba, a person has to love, love people even more. It forces a person to have extra love for another Jew, which is, which is something that we say, remember. The, obviously, there's the, there's the spiritual, spiritual sickness of Lashon Hara. But, but just the, the logical thing is that when a person learns to just talk positive, to think positive, to, to work on his having positive thoughts, for a person to work on everything he says before I say it, is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative? To think about that. That changes a person's whole perspective of himself and everyone around him. Yes. Uh, Shlomo, I. Uh, what can and cannot be said when negative info needs to be shared for a shidduch? Someone said that in? Yeah. 
Really? Slow mo, slow mo. Uh, I. <laughs> hey, yeah. shout out right. slow mo. What's really? Up? Someone just asked a question. Yeah. So, <laughs> wow. Okay. What can be shared about a shidduch? So um, we'll have to privately. I can't say that on a public forum. There are five things that a person has to be very careful when giving information for a shidduch, or in general which we will get to. It's not the forum right now. A person has to be very careful because a lot of times, just like on Shabbos, a person says, oh, we're not allowed to talk about this near Shabbos garret, and they start talking about it. So sometimes people think that when it comes to uh, litoelis, it's litoelis. I'm allowed to say, I'm allowed to say, I'm allowed to say. A person has to be very careful when he's given the ability to say things that he has to say, there are five different um, conditions that a person is able to say the things about somebody. But a person has to be very careful. Contact, in short, contact your local Orthodox rabbi. Right? It's not the forum right now to discuss what a person's allowed to say. You have to be very, very careful about what you're allowed to say, when you're allowed to say it. It can't be a personal grudge. You can't exaggerate. There are a lot of conditions that a person has to be very careful. My advice to Shlomo is to go ahead and, and uh, talk to somebody who has a lot of love for the Jewish people, somebody who doesn't talk Lashon Hara, someone who knows the halachas, um, as opposed to just saying, oh, it's for a shidduch, so therefore let, the, let all the, you know, let all the, uh, floodgates the floodgates open. Thank you, Shai. Mm. Mm. Okay, but just the fact that we we care so much. That's the key. The key is that we care so much. The Jewish people care so much. We all care so much to be so careful. One thing that I know when it comes to Shaduchim is if you put yourself a haftalarecha kamocha, put yourself in the seat of the person who they're asking questions about, put yourself in the seat of the person who's inquiring, meaning it's something. Because a lot of people, when it comes to Shaduchim, right, a lot of people make changes, and they grow. And a lot of people, if you're going to start talking to people about everything that they did in their past, a lot of people would never get married. So a person has to be very careful as what information is given. Beautiful. Hashem should help each and every one of us. We should be zocha. Each and every one of us should be zocha to not speak Lashon Hara, not to listen to Lashon Hara. And if for whatever reason we hear something, not to be macabre it, not to accept it, not to believe it. Hashem should help us and all the Jewish people. Okay, go. Okay. Ah. Now, let us um, continue our journey. We're in Perak Yudalid in Mesil Yishara. What we left off yesterday was very, very powerful. I know a lot of, a lot of us over here um, were talking about what we spoke about. And basically, just to summarize... And then we're going to do Perak Yadalad, which explains it a little bit deeper. And I'm just going to give you guys the background of what we said yesterday. And what we spoke about yesterday was the concept of a person learning how to abstain from things that are luxury and how to go ahead and appreciate the things that are his necessities and to be able to live in the balance. We said this parak of precious in Mesil Yisharim is very, very powerful and is very, very subjective. What's the difference between the objectivity of halacha and the subjectivity of precious and chasidus, which we're going to talk about, is the fact that it, it belongs to everybody on a personal level, which means that nobody can say you have to abstain from this, and you have to make sure you indulge in this. Every person is an individual, and every person has to know himself what are his boundaries, and what are his limits, and what is it that he needs to do, and what is it that he's not allowed to do. To this guy, he can have a cup of wine once or twice a week, and it's the best thing for him. For this guy, if he touches wine, it's the worst for, thing for him. So for this guy, the wine is a mitzvah. For this guy, the wine is an avera, according to him, subjective. For this guy, like we said, he can sit there and watch a football game. And he has to watch, yes. 
It's a mitzvah for him to watch the football game. It's a mitzvah. It could be Ripsi for him even to play football. It could be. You have to play. For another person, you're not allowed to. For another person, you're not allowed to. The key is, and this is where it comes down to, as we said from Rabbi Yisrael Salanter, a person can live in this world for 70, 80 years, and he doesn't even know himself. The goal is to live on this planet and try, I forgot who said the quote, it's a great quote, that it says people are busy trying to know Hashem and believe in themselves. Don't worry about knowing Hashem and believing in yourself. Believe in Hashem and know yourself. That's the key. To know yourself. Know what makes you tick and know what works for you. So the Ramchal over here, question, comments before we get a little bit more detailed into this. Is that understood? Everyone got that? Clear? Clear? Okay. Parag Yudal, it says like this. It's split into three different categories. The first category is Hanaos, which means the enjoyments that we have in this world. Haprizus Bano, says the Ramchal, Lo lakachas medivrei olam elamash atzorech yachriach. Take what you need and enjoy Enjoy. A person is put in this world to enjoy. Take what you need and enjoy. That means eating. It means a person um, having intimate relationships, a person dressing, a person going on tiulim, a person going on um, vacation. These are all things that are important for a person to do. What is, what separates somebody, and this we spoke about, when does a person go and fall into his Averis? If you're someone who falls into alcohol, if you're someone who falls into drugs, if you're someone who falls into escaping different things, so what it means is you are not enjoying your life properly. Why don't you take an eight-year-old kid and tell him to start drinking alcohol, tell him to start smoking, and why, why not? Why, why should he do that? Why not? Because it's not because you have to be 18 for it to be legal. Right? We live in a world, oh, he's not 18 yet, so he can't smoke. Why not? Let him start smoking at 8 years old. If smoking and drinking is so good for you, why don't you do it when you're younger? So what's the, what's the pusher reason? Let's see, someone answer, what's the reason? Because they're enjoying life. What? They're enjoying life. Beautiful. Because they enjoy life. If you enjoy life, and you're a little kid who's enjoying life, you don't need to do stupid things to try and help you enjoy life because you're enjoying life all ready. So the goal is for us to be little children. The goal is for us to enjoy life without any other enhancement because Hashem created a world. Oh, some karaba. Because Hashem created the world and He gave it to us to enjoy. So if you're not enjoying life, you have to more question yourself why am I not enjoying life? What am I doing wrong that I'm not enjoying life? That's number one. Number two is precious bedinim. Listen to this Gemara. This is, listen to this Gemara. This is what the Gemara says. The Gemara in Chulin, Daf, Kuf, Hey. What? Precious in dinim. Very good, look at this guy. Guys, go, 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 go show, don't show on me. The whole shear should be on everybody here. No reason to look at me. So look at the tzaddikim. Look at a person sitting here writing notes. Yitzi wrote up a whole shear. He wrote up a whole shear on his phone. Tell him here, right over here. Right over here. Look at Tzaddikim. You don't need to see. I'm not the shear. This is the shear. Hey, what's the job? He's asking question. What's Dina? What's Dina? Okay, listen to this Gemara. Guys. This is Judaism 101. You want to know what Judaism is? So number one, Judaism tells us, love this world, enjoy it. Sleep well, eat well, make, go on vacation, enjoy life. Because the reason we do Averis, the reason we do things that we're not allowed to do, is because why don't little kids do Averis when they're 10 years old? Why not? Why? Because Shia said the magic word? Because they're having a party all, already. 
They're already having a, an enjoyment. They don't need, they're not depressed and down, and now I need to go ahead, and I need to figure out a way how to, how to get me to enjoy something, because I'm, I'm so down. That's why a person does have errors. A person does have errors to feed his ego, because he's not happy. So says the Ramchal, if you're happy and you're living, you're living healthily, then you're good to go. No problem. That's number one. Number two, listen to this. I love this Gemara. I mean, the Ramchal explains it so beautifully. Listen to what he says. He says, Ana ba'omar mar'ukva. Mar'ukva says, he says, I b'hai milsa chala bar chamra legabe abba. I am vinegar. He called himself vinegar, the son of wine, in relation to my father. Meaning, I'm vinegar, which is bad. Wine is chashuv. I am vinegar, the son of my father, who's wine. Why? Why am I vinegar and my daddy is wine? He says, Dilu Abba, my father, Kadaachil Bisra Ha'idna, when my father has a, a fleshic meal today, Lo Abi Achil Gvinad Lamachar Kiashka. He waits 24 hours between fleshics and milchiks. Va'ana, me, right? He must have been from uh, Holland. Va'hai Sudasa Le'achilna Besuti, it's Achrida Achilna. This meal, I don't eat milk and meat together, but I go from meal to meal. Breakfast, I'll eat meat, and lunch, I'll eat, I'll eat milchik. Or lunch, I'll eat, I'll eat fleshiks, and supper, I'll eat milchiks. <coughs> so what does he call himself? He says, Ubavada, I say, sak halacha. I don't understand, so what, what am I supposed to do? Think about this, Let, let's, let's like go into our houses for a second. Your father goes ahead, and he waits 24 hours. And you, and this is Mar Ukva talking. Mar Ukva says, I wait from one meal to another meal. I'm vinegar, the son of wine. Wait, so first of all, why is he calling himself vinegar? So be like wine. Why are you calling yourself vinegar? Why are you being down on yourself? Wait 24 hours. And why are you only waiting that to call yourself vinegar? Says the Ramchal, I love it. He says, no. He wasn't going against halacha. And that's why he called himself vinegar, the son of wine. He accepted who he was. And he accepted the fact, Marukva. He accepted the fact. Now let me ask you guys a question also. Big, big deal. Exactly. Good, Rupsi. Number one, why is he vinegar? Number two, no, 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 no. Why is he calling himself vinegar? Number two, what's the big deal? So wait 24 hours. Let me ask you guys a question. Mar Ukva, Mar Ukva lived thousands of years ago. You think he couldn't handle it to have one day have meat and the next day have milk? What was he, a Baltaiva? Ella, what do you see from there? That Mar Ukva knew who he was. Mar Ukva was okay, <coughs> Ripsi, to answer your question. Was okay calling himself vinegar because he knew that he was vinegar and that's okay and I'm the son of wine and maybe one day I'll get there but he was honest with himself when it came to halacha that he says yes my father went ahead and waited one day to another day but I'm okay knowing yes so I watch football and my father doesn't watch football okay so I'm a vinegar and my father's wine so stop watching football no Knock yourself out. Know who you are. Yes? A little bit of a bad example because vinegar is like wine that went bad. It would be like cheaper wine. That's even better. That's even better, Rebzev. He's accepting, bad. he's accepting, Rebzev, he's accepting who he is with his deficiencies. <coughs> he's accepting who he is with his limitations. He's accepting who he is saying, I know where I'm at. I know what works for me. Because one day, maybe I will be wine. If you pretend that you're somebody who you're not, then you'll never get there because you don't even know who you are now. You don't even know who you are. If I pretend that I'm supposed to be something that I'm not. <coughs> but when a person is able to accept who he is, and you don't pretend to be someone who you're not, then you take it one step at a time to become who it is that you want to become. Yes? Oh. How do you, how do you know when you're... How do you know when you're... <laughs> you can't film them? Oh. 
Yeah. Oh, your ass. Great question. Great question. Great question, Yehuda. Great question. Great question. So Yehuda's saying, and, and I'd like to hear from you guys, Yehuda's asking, so how do I know, I'm going to tell me if this is what you're saying, if I'm selling myself short. Maybe Marukva is selling himself short by saying, I'm vinegar, right, the son of one. You can have a guy that says, like, oh, I'm learning stuff, so like, uh, not for me, like, right. like, how do you, maybe you just need to push yourself harder, and then right. you will, like, just like an example. Right. How do you so, know when you're so my, so, setting limitations? Okay, so I don't know if somebody wants to answer. Someone has a, an opinion of how you could know, but um, I, I think one you of the ways, uh, yeah, you exactly. You, first of all, you know. Secondly, I think it's more dangerous. I think it's more dangerous for a person to push himself more than push himself less. And I'll tell you why I'm saying that. Because I always like the example of a little kid. There's a natural desire that people have. There's a natural want that a person wants to do this, wants to do that. Right, I spoke to, where is he? Is he here? Shlaimi, another tzaddik over here. Right, Shlaimi. Shlaimi over here, right? <coughs> Shlaimi said, right? He's been, Baruch Shem, he gets up very early, and he told me himself, he told me himself, has it been hard for you to get up for chakras? Yeah, yeah it's been hard, but I'm saying is... is Long answer. No, no, I don't want you to do that. I want you to tell, I want you to tell me what, when you're... It's, uh... <laughs> It's very hard, but I've been doing it the last few weeks, so I was scared, like maybe I'm gonna burn out. But the Rebbe asked me if I'm enjoying it, so I said I love it, I really do enjoy it. So today I was about to sleep in, but I enjoy the, 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 the struggle, the in and out of bed, you know? So, so what I mean, very good, beautiful, fun. Yeah, so that was, that, was, that was exactly, what what's the point, we spoke about this, Someone sent in one of the quotes, and I think I said this to Shlomo when we spoke about this, is that, is that walking up that mountain and climbing the mountain, right? Climbing Yitzi, we spoke about this also. Climbing the mountain with a pebble in your shoe is different. It's a different hard than climbing the mountain because you want to climb the mountain, and it's still hard to climb the mountain. So why am I saying that? Naturally, we have to trust ourselves. We have to trust ourselves and accept ourselves. I think, personally, I think it's much better for a person, quote unquote, to start easier, to start slower, and to pace himself. Because I think the natural thing that a person does is he forces himself to run ahead, and then it ends up being, like I said yesterday, right? How many people start off this man? That's it. I'm getting up for chakras every morning for the rest of the year. Slow down, right? I'm not drinking anymore for the rest of my life. One of the things that the 12 steps says, which is very... There's a quote for the mountain thing. That what? The problem was the pebble in my shoe, not the mountain of boulders. Right. The, the problem, say it again. The problem, the problem was the pebble in my shoe, not the mountain of boulders. Right. The, pro, the problem was the pebble in my shoe, not the mountain uh, of boulders. What's the shot? The shot is, is, that, is that we all naturally have to trust our, our as a kid, the fact that we want to wake up, people, I can't tell you how many people, I, I tell you, I think it's the biggest Yetzirah in the world. The biggest Yetzirah in the world. A guy says, oh, um, how's your learning, how's this? Oh, forget my learning, I can't even get up for chakras. No, maybe if your learning was going well, then you'd get up early because you want to learn. We get so hyper-focused, we get so hyper-focused on, on whether I'm dysfunctional, I have a problem. You don't have a pro nobody has a pro no one has a sleeping problem. Your teenage first of all, teenagers need much more sleep than adults. As you get older, a person needs ten hours, possibly nine hours. You need to sleep. So a person goes to sleep at 12, 1 o'clock, consistently two o'clock, and he gets up anyway at seven, eight o'clock in the morning. That's incredible. But for a person to sleep for 10 hours is not so crazy. It's not so crazy for a person to want to sleep and to feel good. So what's the pshat? The pshat is, is that we naturally want to be successful. We naturally want to be productive. We naturally want to be happy. A little kid naturally is happy. 
A, na- a little kid. Let me ask you a question. Does a 10-year-old kid sleep late? No way. He's jumping out of bed. He's so excited. He's so excited. A 5-year-old, 8-year-old, 11-year-old. Then what happens? 4.30 Suddenly, in the morning. What? 4.30 in the 4:30 morning. 4.30 in the morning. Your, your, your kid. Correct. Oh. And then you try and put them in for a nap? No way. <coughs> Why? They're busy. They want to do things. They want to get things going, right? I said that the other day. The Mezzer Chamagat says you got to learn three things from children. Number one is they're always happy. They're always happy, kids. Number two, they're always busy. And number three, when they don't get something that they want, they cry until they get it. Mm-hmm. So what's the shot? We gotta be like little kids. If you're sleeping and you're bored, it's not because you have a problem of getting up for chakras. You don't have a problem getting up for chakras. It's that purpose is the greatest alarm clock. It means that you're not excited about yourself. You're not excited about your day, you're not excited about something. Okay, we got a little bit off topic over here. Go, Rupsim Karam. Um, I just think that it's worthwhile yeah, yeah. to point out that he gave that he gave an example of 24 hours to meal to meal, and he didn't give an example of like, I want to eat a cheeseburger. Right, right. So when, just what he was referring to, if, if a coach tells you that you can run the mile, then like, that means that you can run the mile. Like if Hashem tells you that you can not eat milk and meat, there is no shikul. And I even think like, you know, there's many stories of people in Manhattan that people come over to them, oh, do you want to do modeling? Anybody have that happen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And like, anybody, even though you know it's a scam, like even though you know it's not real, you walk away feeling like, oh, like he thinks I'm shy to modeling. So like, I do think it's worthwhile to point out that when it comes to like the basics that are explicit in Shulchan Aruch, like this doesn't even start because I'm already, I already know that I can do it because I've been told that I can do it. These are things that I haven't been told I can do. So now it starts coming up with this, uh, Shakul of where I'm holding. Very nice. Good point. Beautiful. Okay. Yes. There is something that Achray al Hatulos and Shahim Halabama. So first is not holding where he's holding. Right. But he's doing a certain uh active right. thing. Right. The chinna. Right. 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 Exactly. Right. So there is there is a balance that someone has to know right. himself well, to Right. So just to, so a hundred percent the question is though if you tell someone <coughs> go run five miles and if you do it you'll be able to do it, or do I say run? A half a mile. So there's a certain balance where you have to. Well, 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 no, it is true. It is true that that my actions <coughs> will awaken my feelings. Exactly. But the problem that we have when when we when we say that is okay. So yeah, if I learn six hours straight, I'll get used to it. Why are you starting with six hours? Start with ten minutes. Right, right. That's where the problem <coughs> comes. You're right. When it becomes black and white. That a person thinks, well, if I just do it, we're told, learn three stars a day and you'll be fine. No, why start with that? Start with learn an hour. Learn two hours. But yes, very, very good point. So just to wrap up this part, because then we're going to get to a very, very powerful part in, in the Ramadan. Wrap up this part. So again, when it comes to the enjoyment in this world, you have to first identify what's a luxury and what's a necessity. What do I need? And what do I not need? And happiness comes when a person is living in the world of doing everything that he needs, and then he realizes that his needs already are a luxury. Baruch Hashem, I have everything that I need. Number two is for a person to abstain from anything that is over too much. Too much, to be careful with that. The second thing is when it comes to halacha, and when it comes for a person being sensitive to halacha, to be very honest with yourself and to know where is it that I am holding. Am I holding at a level where I could take so much on or I have to slow down? And most of the time, as Yehuda was saying, I could say this as a general statement, most of the time I've witnessed that people take on too much. Better ma'at bi kavana than harbe below kavana. Take it slow, you will get there, especially when you're young, you start learning an hour and you have concentration, then you'll learn another half hour, <coughs> two hours. By the time you're two, three, four years in, you could be learning a whole day, having a blast learning. What happens is people force themselves into situations where they don't belong. And they do that because they're copying other people, they do that because they don't wanna be vinegar, the son of wine, 
everybody wants to be the macho man themselves, and then what happens? They fall, and then they feel guilty, whatever happens after that. That's number two. Number three, listen to this one. This one's very heavy. Haprishas ben Minhagim says the Ramchal. And I'm going to give a little bit of a background, and we've spoken about this before, but I want to say this is very, very important. The Ramchal in Zahira says that one of the things that holds a person back from growth is hanging out with people and peer pressure. Especially nowadays with social media, so it's not just peer pressure of people who I could see, it's a whole world that a person can feel tremendous pressure from other people, and I'm willing to sell my soul, sell my soul for the guy next to me <coughs> who ultimately is selling his soul for me. So you can have a whole group of five, ten people hanging around, everyone's looking to the other guy to see who's going to accept me and I'm going to accept him, and we're all trying to accept each other, as opposed to just live your life and do your thing. As the Ramchal over there says, if you had a job making a million dollars, you're not going to look at your friends and say, okay, uh, does everyone accept me? Because now they're not going to accept me because I'm the guy who's making a million dollars and everybody else is struggling. A person wouldn't do that. He would lose his friends like that. Now what happens to us, and I'm speaking to you guys because you're a little bit younger, is there's something called high school. Now high school is a place where people are much more self-conscious of belonging. And what people do is they stay in high school for their whole lives. They can't get out of high school. And their whole mentality and their whole head is who are my friends and am I popular? I could speak to, I've spoken to guys who are 23, 24 years old. I say, so what's your goal? A single guy. I'll say, so what's your goal? Well, my goal is I'm coming to this yeshiva, blah, blah, blah. I want to make friends. And I say it to them, obviously, not the first time I, I meet them, but usually what I say to them is, you're 24 years old. I said, your days of friends are way over. What do I mean by that? You went to elementary school, you went to high school. It's not now time to make <coughs> friends. As you get older, you'll see, kenei lecha chavra. The Mishnah doesn't say, kenei lecha chaverim. It says, kenei lecha chavra. A chaver is someone who's very serious with you. A chaver is someone who really means a lot. If we were all in high school, I would stop the conversation right now, and I would just say, guys, make sure you're popular, have a good time, enjoy the chevra. That's what I would say. I wouldn't say probably make sure you're popular, I would just say, enjoy the chevra. Now it's not about enjoying your chevra. Now it's about figuring out what your life is about. It's about moving forward. And if you speak to Enjoying anybody yourself. who's been matzliach, who said that? Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Very good, child. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. What happens is, is that many people, many people who are afraid to do this end up still, and then when they get married, who are my friends, who are my wife's friends, and then they're a little bit older, they're very concerned about who their chevra is, as opposed to looking forward, keeping their eye on the prize, going ahead and focusing, yes, Ripsi? Yeah, principles before Arab personality. That's what? what I'm saying. The key is principles before personality. Yes, yes. <coughs> principle before personality. And, and this is something that's very hard. Listen to what the Ramchal, listen to how, how the Ramchal puts it. And I have a major chiddish in the Ramchal because he says something very interesting. Again, he's talking about hanging around people. This is his diak. I made many years ago, he says like this. He says, His bodunus fi bal mena chevra, lefanos libo el avoda, ba his bonus ba karau. He says, Cherev al sonem shall tell me chum shiosh and bad revad ba oskim ba Torah. He says, You have to be careful not to be a loner. You can't be a loner. He says, But, Yeshaber ha adam. Hang out with people for what you need. So you have to go to work. So you hang out with people to share your work experience, to share different things. You have your friend or two who helps you in life. As we said this morning in Shir, Rashi says, means get a good book. Get a good safer. It's the best friend that you will have. 
That's the best friend that you can have. So your friendships are a friend who can help you. And I'm saying this to everyone here at your stage. If you hang around people who are into things that are negative things, I'll say it even more, as the Vilna Gain says, it's from the Vilna Gain. If you're not going up, you're going down. So if your chevra or your friend is not doing positive things, run away from him. I'm not, don't judge him. Don't think you're better than him. You don't have to even go there. He could be better than you. But run away from him. Why? Because what he's doing is, he is pulling you away from your growth. He's literally killing you. He's killing you. And again, I'm not saying to judge him. I'm not saying not to, to be nice to him. But you got to be able to separate yourself from that. And he says, V'yisboded acharkach lidavik belakavu lahasik darche ayosher v'avoda hamitis. So says the Ramchal. That's why I always say, people say, why do you say to get married when you're 21 years old? Why am I getting married? What, what else are you doing? Get married. Wait, were you looking for friends at 21? There are many people, they go to yeshiva at 21, 22, 23. They're hanging out with the chevra. I have no idea what they're doing. I need a good chevra. I need a this. Why do you need a good chevra? You got your gemara. You got your learning. You got your thing. Go get a shidduch. Go find your wife. And that's it. And go weiter. there. Okay, if a person doesn't find his wife, he's trying. Okay. But that's only because he's in that situation. He's not looking at 22, 23, 24 to get chevra. Now again, I'm not anti people, of course. It's not me anti. It doesn't mean on Shabbos people don't sit together and sing zmiras. It doesn't mean you don't have a chevra that goes to Mezhbuz, that goes to here, that goes to the tzaddikim. That's not stam hanging out doing stupidity. That's a vodas Hashem. That's having a chavrusa. That's dealing with someone who's growing. And that can make the biggest difference in a person's life. Can make the biggest difference in a person's life is who you're hanging out with. Because the nature is for a person to judge himself based on his surroundings. And when you're around people who are growthful people, when you're around people who are talking the truth and MS, it inspires a person. When you're around people who are dark, <coughs> negative, and misery loves misery. So if you're hanging around a certain group of people or a person who's not talking the way you want to talk, then it's your fault. It's your fault because you're being machaber yourself to something that's going to bring you down. That's what the Ramchal says. He says one more line, then I'll give it over to you guys. He says this is the line that's crazy. <laughs> says the Ramchal, <laughs> Don't talk so much, says the Ramchal. It's always a great Eitzah. Because when you talk so much, you're, you're trying to connect and you're trying to make friends. The Lizar Minasicha Betela, right? People could sit around and talk about, and again, I love basketball, I love football, all this stuff. People, people can spend hours and hours and hours talking about, right, LeBron James. They can sit around talking. Now, I'm not talking about a little kid, I'm not talking about little children. I'm talking about mature people could talk and talk and talk about stupidity day and night, and nobody knows what they're talking about. Right? That's what that's what Sicha Betel is. The Gra, the Gra says he doesn't even understand. The Gra in Mishlei says I don't even understand why people talk. He doesn't understand the Taiva of Sicha Betel. It's one of the reasons why people don't learn Torah. One of the reasons people don't learn because they're busy talking stupidity. That's a fact. It's a fact that we have to be honest with. Now listen to this line. He says, "Vishalo lehistakel chutz me arba amosov." One of the best lines I've seen in the Mesilas Yisharim. "Vishalo lehistakel chutz me arba amosov." Don't look outside of your dalid amos. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Now I want to ask you guys a question: Why did the Ramchal talk about this when he's talking about social gatherings? He's definitely not talking about hana. Because the Ramchal said there are three things. There's precious in Hana, there's precious in Dinim, and then there's precious in Hebra. So why didn't he say, if it's talking about not looking at something, right? Because <laughs> that's not the point. People think Shmira Seinayim means not looking at other things. Says the Ramchal, no. Shmira Seinayim also includes not to look at anybody else. As Rabsi says, stay in your lane. Stay in your focus. 
And we were talking about Yitzi Raymond. Yitzi Raymond, a holy Jew. We were talking about him last night, and we were saying we're so proud of Yitzi. Why are we proud of Yitzi Raymond? Why are we proud of Yitzi Raymond? I'll tell you why I'm proud of Yitzi Raymond. Stop, Yitzi's a big tzaddik. But one of the reasons I'm proud of Yitzi Raymond is because Yitzi Raymond made a decision and went with it and is doing his thing. He's doing his thing. In life, in life, the challenge that we all have is the challenge of copying other people, trying to fit in, and not being you. And says the Ramchal so clearly over here, if you want to be a healthy Ovid Hashem, if you want to be a healthy person in Avodah Hashem, do you. Don't look at the guy to your left. He says it. Don't look. Do you know what Dalad Amos is? You know how big Dalad Amos is? It's not a lot. Dalad Amos is not a lot. Where do we get the biggest challenges? When I'm having a great day, when I'm having a this and I'm doing my thing, and then what do I do? Suddenly I look to my left, I look to my right. That's when you destroy yourself. Says the Ramchal, those are the tickets for a person to be a well-balanced person, to be a well Balanced Jew. Don't look at anybody else. Yes, go ahead, Schleim. It makes very much sense for the not hanging out with bad friends because your bad friends are going to be within your Dalai Lama. Mm. You don't want to. Correct. They're not within your Dalai Lama. You could do your thing. Correct. Correct. Of course, it has to be very. What Shlomo is saying, which is interesting, is you have to be careful who you let into your Dalai Lama, who you let into your boundaries. So what's incredible, the Ramchal is telling us, is be very careful not to look outside. I think this is part of it also. As what Yehuda was asking, how do I know what I have to work on? I think all of us felt the same thing. You know what you have to work on. You know the pace that you have to make it. The only reason we accelerate, or the only reason we're not happy, is because we're not focused on what I need. We're not focused on being vinegar, the son of wine. We're focused on being wine, wine. This is incredible. Maruk for himself, he was so, he accepted the fact, number one, he called himself vinegar, I love it. So what's wrong if I say, I can't handle this right now? What's wrong to say? I'm not holding right now to get up for chakras every morning. I'm gonna start getting up by nine o'clock, by 10 o'clock. I wanna start getting up once a week, twice a week. Has anyone ever done that? Usually no, it's all or nothing. I'm making chakras every morning or I'm sleeping. I'm going to learn all of Shas, but I'm not learning anything. I'm going to learn, be a big tzaddik or not. That's not, that's not what it's about. Please, question or comments. What's yeah, the, Shai. Uh, last thing? Huh? Well, what's the last thing? <coughs> yeah, yeah, he's saying, Yeah, yeah, he's saying, Margil's Asmayam, Chesarlam, Ateva, El Tanu Osov. He's saying all other things that a person will, it will become a habit as he does it. A person has to be very, very careful in, in how he's living because everything starts becoming a, a habit when you live in a certain, when you live a certain way. A person has to hold himself back from just doing the, the things that people do, herigal, regular herigal of people doing just natural things. Oh, that's what everybody does. This is what people do. That's how people live. A person has to be very careful to pull himself away from that. Because otherwise, you just become a bobblehead, as we've said many times. You just become a bobblehead, and you don't even think what you're doing. Yes? Yeah, with the dollar almost, it's, like, it's the most important, because you're your worst enemy. So really, you got to just watch really what you do. Beautiful. Well said. Well said. Right, you're your worst enemy. Beautiful, because if you're really dealing with yourself properly, then you will fight it. I like what, I like what Binyamin's saying. What Binyamin's saying, I think, I don't know what you're saying. But if I'm always so focused on everybody else, then I'll never learn how to deal with myself. What happened to Bruce Lee? Um, yeah? Bruce Lee said you're, you're your own competitor. You're like, you compete against yourself. Right, you compete against yourself. Yeah. What, do you want to say something? Yeah, Shimmy? Uh, what you're doing is also what you attract. So, like, if you're doing all the positive things, the positive people will come around you. Mm-hmm. If you're not doing positive things, then you'll know your circle. Right, very good. Meaning instead of blaming, very good. Meaning instead of blaming other people that I happen to be hanging around other people, there's no happen to be. I attract the people who are around me. Yeah, so true. 
Yes. Yeah, just to uh, uh, point out, when you're talking about not looking outside your uh, dalit <coughs> a person is walking towards his goal, his dalit almost is constantly changing. Oh. It's a radius from where he is. Beautiful. So as a person grows, as a person changes, he always has to constantly be evaluated. Everything, everything that's mentioned has to always be constantly be evaluated. Beautiful. And Beautiful. Uh, well yeah. said. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. Shlaimi told me a great part of the day. So he told me something that's, that was a little bit life-changing. He said that I just wish that my Yetzirah didn't speak in my own voice. Mm. And, uh, it was an unbelievable concept. Shlaimi, fire. Well, I think what's, what's I think what's interesting that that uh, Rabbi Tawil is saying and, and quoting Shlomo over here. I think what's really based on what Binyamin is saying is that Binyamin is the pshats like this: is that it's really the biggest bracha that the Yitzharah speaks in your own voice. Why? Because the 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 more a person learns his Yitzharah, like Binyamin saying, the reason we don't know our Yitzharah is because we're so busy looking at everybody else's Yitzharah. The reason that I don't know my Yetzirah is because I'm busy in someone else's Yetzirah and Yetzirah. But like Binyamin saying, if I learn to accept that this is my Yetzirah and not your Yetzirah, and that everybody has a different Yetzirah, and the key in life is for me to know what makes me tick. The key in life is to make me know, to, for me to understand what it is that I am good at to make me understand what are the things that I am not good at. So then a person can start, I think the Avodos Panim, a big, big tzaddik, a slanomer chassid, a big tzaddik once said, each and every one of us is like a mesechta. The key in life is to know your mesechta inside out, Gemara, Rashi, Tosis, Mishonim, know your mesechta cold. What is your mesechta? Who are you? What is, what is every daf on your page, every day? The problem is we're always looking over to somebody else's Masechta. We're always looking over to someone else's Yetzirah. His Yetzirah. I'm on daf Yibadrain. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the Ramchal says, yeah, Leila Daber, right? Don't to talk. Lemai Bedibo. Oh. You kidding me? Who's your Rebbe? It says, want, like, it says, you should just listen and you just want, everything will come. So, you know, it doesn't, like, if it's like, it goes the same thing. Don't talk so much, just listen and want. Beautiful. Beautiful. Listen, I like that. Listen and want, and then you will be someone who's not a talker. You'll be someone who's a doer. You're someone who will be living his, his dream. He will be living the life. And what's, what's crazy, what's crazy is, is that you tr- every person can truly live his dream and be happy. That's what the Ramchal, that's why this, these prakim, to me, I feel so close to these prakim. Because what the Ramchal has helped me on a personal level, I could just share, on a personal level, was, was the ability to find within Yiddishkeit, to find within Hashem, to find in Torah, to find within myself the balance <coughs> to be a healthy, happy person. People associate being a from Jew, People associate being a holy Jew with a disconnect with yourself. It's the exact opposite. The more holy you are, the more connected to yourself you are. The more connected to yourself you are, the more holy you are. It's not what we think it is. And here the Ramchal, I think, spells it out. Okay, last thing as we wrap it up. We're good? Anyone else? Hashem, yes. Oh, one more. Beautiful word. Small saying, the Dalit Amos, like it doesn't, it's not like, 
a mask you could also exhibit. It's not like straight up like Dalai Ramos, you know? Like it could be like ever changing. So right. You could, by being in your Dalai Ramos, you could just be constantly, could be constantly changing, constantly new things, but in a, it has to be in a healthy way. So like it has to be, should be your, your Dalai Ramos should be changing for the good. Right. Keep, keep constantly changing. Beautiful. Constantly reinventing. You're reinventing yourself. Mm-hmm. Correct. Read that book. Reinventing yourself. Yes. Reinventing yourself. Beautiful word. Right? You look at more it's sitting here with his notebook. I'm going to say it again. Sitting here with his notebook. Can I see it for a second? Uh-oh. <laughs> notes. I don't know. Hey, hey, look at this. Look at this. Nasil Zisharam. Notes, notes, musr. Notes and notes. This is staying in your Daladamas. Focusing on me serious. Focus on the That's staying in your Daladamas. Staying in your Daladamas is focusing... Focusing on what I have to do. And I'm telling you, the second you do that, you're free. You're free because you're able to live the life that you want to live. Hashem made you special. Hashem made you special. Hashem only made one of you for all of eternity. And what do we do? What's the biggest gullus? Rav Simcha Bunim said this 200 years ago. He says, the biggest gullus is the I, is the Ani. And it makes so much sense. We're so far from ourselves. But really, it's the most simple thing to be. It's like, how can I be, right? I had this, um, I'll get to you in one second, you know what I, mean? I had this, I forgot when it was, maybe a few weeks ago. I had this, I think, with my 13-year-old. I'm trying to think the story what happened. But it was something like, um, I was talking I forgot exactly what the whole, the whole conversation but it ended up his name's Avram and I said to him um, you know just be Avram like I was trying to just you know talk to him and I said just be Avram and he looked at me like I was crazy he was like what do you mean just be Avram who else could I be and he wasn't saying it in a in like a deep philosophical way like who am I? Who else could I be? He's a 13-year-old kid saying, like, what do you mean be Avram? I am Avram. And what happens is, over time, we forget who we are. As they say, when a person dies, don't forget who you are. A person can live his whole life and he forgot who he is. He forgot whatever reason. We forgot who we are. Remember who you are. Yes, Vinyam. I want to ask what more you say in that, even though like your dollar almost is always changing and everything like that. At the same time, like Barry was saying before, that you just take one step at a time. Like go dollar almost at a time. Take it small. Right. Correct. Beautiful. Right. Good Asa. Right. It's true. Take one. Take one. Take one step at a time. Yes, Rupi. Yeah. Uh, just a cute thing. That's why it says chaber, uh, not chaber. You could only fit one guy in your dollar mm. almost. And if it's always changing, you don't have to worry. You could have more friends. The Lamed Vavnik Club. People think it's it's always changing. Once it reaches it reaches thirty six, and they they did for me a thirty seven one, but it changes. So you could have many friends, but if you focus with that friend and the Talmud Amos, you'll be fine. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Shkayev would say, Shkayev. Yeah. Another question. First of all, welcome, Shem. Welcome. Said about um, when you're surrounding yourself with friends, you should, you know, wherever you're going, those are the friends that you should surround yourself with. What happens for me? I could give you an example. Sometimes I need a little extra push from one of my, you know, from one of my friends. Like I told Aroni, if he could wake me up, you know, a little bit more for the morning shot. Yeah. You asked the right guy. He's like, he got not, a good friend. I would not have gone. So that's Kenei Lecha Chaver. That's good. And no, so I want to know when, when do you know when to do that. When can you know yourself? Like, Oh my friend, look, he needs a little push, but it's dangerous. That's dangerous territory because you push too hard, you're gonna you know, <coughs> screw everything up. And if you don't push, then you're also screwing up. Right, so, right, right. The... Well, that's like what Yehuda was saying. I mean, as a person, usually, like I said, usually we go, we go too fast. It's important to know yourself, to take it slow. And I always say this: if I know I'm gonna get there, if I know I'm gonna get to my destination then I could take it slow. When people are afraid that they're not going to reach their destination, 
they got to go very, very fast. If I know I'm going to get somewhere, I could take it one day at a time to get there. So when you are clear about what your goal is, and you're clear of where you want to be, then you could take it one step at a time. It's when we don't have such a clear goal, so then we have to pretend that we're going fast, so that it makes us feel like we're doing a lot. As opposed to, I got all the time in the world because I'm going to get there. So clarify, maybe just to answer your question, clarifying where I'm headed is more important than how fast I'm going. Okay, good point. That's a quote from Aroni. A quote from Aroni. I found the quote. What? I found the quote. You found that life is the most difficult exam. Many people fail because they try to copy others, not realizing that everyone has a different question paper. We can end off with that. Beautiful. Hashem should help each and every one of us. We should all be Zoha, everyone. We should be Zoha to fulfill these three principles that the Ramchal is teaching us. Number one, to know what it is that we need in our physical lives. Number two, to be honest with ourselves when it comes to our relationship with Hashem and Halacha. And number three, when it comes to socially, to know who to hang out with, when to hang out, and to be clear about what my focus and what my goals in life are. Because if I'm focused on my exam, on my life, then I will live the way, it, the way it's supposed to be. That's the way Hashem made it for me to live my life. Have a wonderful day. And remember, today is the first day of the rest of your life. Thank you. Yeah.